And this is uh, Mark Di Giuseppe, the legendary straniero. And this is the final, hopefully the final uh, installment. This will be installment number three of the uh, Pimp My One Man Band about my latest invention, which I call One Man Bandit. And here it is here. It's changed quite a bit since the beginning. I've moved things around. I'm gonna go through it and explain everything to you now. There's the flute. Okay. Now this happens all the time. You know, when you're making a one-man band, when I'm making a one-man band, I start out thinking about where things are gonna go. I try this piece here, try this piece here, and then I attach them and stuff. But I always wind up finding a new piece and then because that piece doesn't fit I have to move everything else around I think I'm finally very happy with this instrument it's very lightweight which is amazing because it's kind of big but I don't know it only weighs everything together probably weighs about five kilos um, anyway so I like I, I, I started with a, a bass drum from a child's bass drum which had an acetate drum head the head broke right away. It took nothing to break that acetate drum head. And to change the skin on this drum, which is made of cardboard and not a regular size, was really a mess. I had to, to it had a, a ring like this on both sides, and the skin didn't have any ring around the edge of it. So when I put on a, a skin that does have a ring, this is the ring here, I had to take that ring and saw it here all the way through the inside and make two rings separate that piece that goes in here and then it's held by wooden struts against here see if not the whole cardboard drum would collapse um and then i i strung it with strings first and then i also put wire on each one of these things to pull it together because if that string ever breaks if it breaks in one place the whole thing's gonna unravel and the drum will come apart um, this is my snare drum. Let's see on the bottom of it. It's got a steel wire drum brush held up against it. That makes the snare. And this was a darabuka. You know what a darabuka is? This is a darabuka. And what I did to this one is I cut it all the way around here. And I used just this piece at the top. That's how I made this. It was from a, a large dot of book. It probably was this big before I cut it. Even bigger. Okay. And that is played by my strumming hand of the banjo. And I'm strumming the banjo, this, this hand here. And I'll follow the, it goes from my hand up to this pulley, then down down here, comes out through there, not touching anything. And down to activate this mallet, which has elastic here that pulls it back up again. And here it's got some uh, foam rubber that keeps it from banging against this drum. Uh, so that's the snare drum. Then I've got this under my arm, goes like this. And that's pulls a string right here, which goes through the inside. It's a string here, goes up into that hole, which is uh, these things here. These things here are these. Uh, they have they they use them for bolts, and a pulley is always best. But in a lot of situations, you can use one of these things. It it keeps the the rope from fraying at the angle. Anyway, when that pulls down, it activates that. Um, now the coolest thing, this is, this is where it gets really cool. I added on this Darabuka recently. And I gave it two sticks. It's got one stick that hits it in the center with a soft uh, felt mallet. And I've got another one that's just a very thin stick that hits it as flat as possible against this, the drum skin, and that gives it crack. 
And those are activated by when I'm using my banjo. I, when I go forward, I get the mallet. And when I go down, I get the, the crack sound. Okay, and those are here. There's three. There's, this hooks onto the head of the banjo. Now, going down gives me my crack. When I go forward, it gives me the mallet. And when I go up, it get, oops, sorry, I got a knot here. When I go up, it gives me the cymbal. Okay, on this here, which is the snare drum, I also hook this, which gives me a second cymbal. When I use my, my strumming hand, when I push it forward. Uh, and then last of all, I've got my pan flute here, and I built this myself out of PVC tubing. It's uh, 16 millimeter PVC tubing with corks in the bottom to tune it. And I made all the tubes a little bit longer so that the corks stuff all the way inside. That way they don't fall out and they don't get pushed in or out so that, they, so that it loses tune. And if I do want to tune it, I can just push the corks up and down. I arrange it like a piano keyboard. You can see these would be the black notes. And these are the white notes, except that I do do a strange thing here. This is a... Uh, Really, I used, to, I used to have always my, my lowest note would be here, but I added two steps lower. But I didn't put them, I didn't put up the, the note up there because it just would have been weird. I got these new microphones, which is just incredible. I got them for five euro at the uh, Chinese store. And they're copies of Shure SM57s. Um, they're for the computer. They're made in aluminum and they work really good. You have to make a special... Uh, a power source. You have to make a power source for them and that runs on a on a 1.5 volt battery. That's right here. And this is the power source that I built for them right there. The power source consists of just one resistor and uh, and one capacitor. Okay. Oh, one thing I should mention here. Now look, this is my main power switch. It turns on the power to this which runs from a rechargeable 6 volt battery is mixer rechargeable 6 volt battery it also runs this the same battery and it turn this switch turns on both of them and it also turns on my saxi which is over here saxi is a digital kazoo which goes to one of those microphones and turns on that too it's a good idea to have a main power switch that way you don't have all these other things that you can accidentally leave on and run out your battery um, now there's the bass drum mallets too and I did I used fiberglass sticks fiberglass sticks are a good idea because you know they won't break they won't get stuck on something and get broken um, I wanted to I never mentioned before I use these things these are plastic cable ties nylon cable ties they built almost everything on this instrument everything is held together with these cable ties everything and that's really good because if it ever if one breaks you can always have these in your pocket and fix it up and you can take things off easily and replace them easily all that it takes is making a hole somewhere and strapping them on you know bzzz. these are great for one man bands before these were invented I used to always use uh, what do you call that stuff uh, duct tape duct tape gets sticky and it, it doesn't work nearly as well all right um, ah, one, I also wanted to talk about this when when I'm ready to move you know when I'm taking the instrument somewhere I have a way oh hang on there I have a way that I can hold down all the mallets by doing this look this elastic holds down all the mallets against their strike, all against the things that they hit, so that they don't sit and bang, 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 bang when I walk. Uh, um, also here, the, these mallets, now these here, I've already, I had them made out of wood before, and two times I got them caught in the door on the train and ripped the mallets right off. So, hang on, I gotta, this can go across the top of them, it goes, 
now it hooks down right there so that it holds the mallets in an upright position so that they don't get broken off when I'm traveling. And you have to remember to take it off. Okay, listen, I'm going to stop the camera for just a second and get ready for, uh, I'll show you how it works. I forgot to cover this before. There's three microphones here. And this one is just normal. This one goes to my Zoom, which is a guitar effect, costs a hundred dollars. And this guitar effect does everything for guitar. But I'm using it only as a smart harmonizer on my voice. I have to tune in the key of the song that I'm playing in. And when I do that, and I sing into this microphone, it makes a harmony that follows my voice, makes two voices. But it's not always two voices that are the same distance apart. It, follow, it listens to the note that I sing, and it can make those distances correct for making the, the scale. And I'm just amazed at what a cool effect it is. Um, I, oh, I just wanted to point out this. I got a telephone cable here. And it's got four contacts. That gives me one contact for the ground and then one contact for each microphone. So by plugging in this one cable, I'm plugging in all the microphones at the same time. It saves a lot of trouble and a lot of mess with all wires all over the place. Okay, so now I'm hooking up everything the way it's supposed to be. I get my little shaker and then uh, do the sound check. Sound check. Okay, first is uh, where's the thing? First is this microphone here. Chick, chick, chick. I got a little phaser on there to do some reggae. And then this microphone here is the harmony, and it's not working. This one. This is a saxy. It's right here, which is a, it's a digital kazoo. I sing into it, and it makes a synthesizer sound that follows my voice. It's not doesn't change my voice. It's a note that follows my voice, and it makes different sounds, but I like the tuba the best. It also does a saxophone and clarinet. But stick with the with that sound. But I still don't have anything under this microphone. I'm going to have to stop and fix that. Okay, I got that problem fixed uh, with the microphone here. Now you can hear the harmony. Um, it was just cables put in the wrong place. Okay, now I just got a hook on my feet. And my feet are both face drums. So I hook these babies up. Uh, and, sorry. And as you can see, As you can see on my feet, if I can see my feet, yeah. I have these things so I can even play without shoes on, which I don't usually do outside, but it's nice in the house. Okay, and that's it. I'm all ready. Put this baby on. Uh, now this is all new for me. Well, now we're ready. I got everything fixed up. Um, it's a hot day in southern Italy, I tell ya. Okay, I'm already sweating before I start to play. Let's see how it all works together. When I go down, I get that. When I go forward, and when I get up, I get just the, the symbol. Uh, under my arm, and my snare drum, and symbol, and the bass drum.
this has uh, been the last installment of uh, Pit My One Man Band on the One Man Bandit. And uh, nothing. Um, I just like to say some people, sometimes they say that I make these videos because I'm, I'm self-promoting and stuff. I don't know. I make these videos to help if somebody wants help. I don't think that I'm the world's greatest expert or anything. I also make them because I hope that you guys would make one and share them with me too and we can see how everything works together. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. You know, if, if you didn't enjoy it, maybe this video wasn't for you. Anyway. This has been Pimp My One Man Band on the One Man Band Club. Have yourselves a good time. Stay cool.